Okay guys, today I'm going to show you how I make a book. This is a really, really simple book form. There are a lot of really fantastic book forms that you can make uh, and different kinds of stitches and uh, all different kinds of things. So if you really get into book making, you can really go, up, you know, there's some really creative things that you can do. If you're looking for inspiration, um, I would suggest looking online just for artists' books or handmade books. Instagram and Facebook both have really great uh, hashtags or groups that you can follow and lots of really inspiring stuff online. This is a book that I like, uh, that I got a long time ago. It's just called The Book as Art. Uh, and I just think it's a really fantastic book. Uh, lots of different great ideas. And also it kind of um, moves beyond just what we would think of as a traditional book and really pushes the boundaries of what a book can be and what we can think of a book as being. Um, but I'm just going to show you a really, really simple way to sew up a book. Uh, before we get started, I think you it's nice to have all of your supplies in one place. So I'm just going to go through the stuff that I have here. Uh, I have some pieces of paper. This is watercolor paper. And you know something that you can do with books is you can use a lot of different kinds of paper. So you know, go to an art store and search for really, really cool handmade papers. Um, anything, anything that you can fold. You know, newsprint could be used. I've seen um, even fabric or wallpaper samples. You know, you can really get creative with the stuff that you're putting in the book. Transparency or like vellum is really cool to put in there. So you have some kind of transparent or translucent pages in there. Uh, tracing paper, you know, really whatever you can think of. Uh, and then so I've got three pages that I'm gonna that I'm gonna use. I think you want probably at least three pages. Um, if you start to get a lot of pages, then there's probably different stitching stitching techniques that you need to try to use. But for a simple one, I go with three pages and then I have another sheet uh, that I'm gonna use for the cover. So these pages, when you cut your paper, you have to remember that you're gonna fold the paper in half. So if you want your book, uh, whatever size you want your book to be, you're going to make the length of the paper actually twice what you want the final length of the book to be, because it's gonna be folded in half. So when you're measuring, just keep that in mind. Okay, and then the cover, if you can see, I'm gonna just place this paper, kind of center it on there. The cover I have cut slightly larger, about uh, a half inch or so, larger all the way around so that the cover is a little bit bigger than the pages. So those are just things that you have to think about when you're when you're cutting your paper. Okay, I also have a bone folder and you, this is, you don't need to have a bone folder. You can use your fingernail uh, or just something else, the edge of a, some scissors or a ruler just to help you get a nice even fold and I'll show you why that is important. I have this little pokey tool. Um, and again, you don't really need this. You could also make the holes with a, some kind of a needle or really any kind of sharp implement, but it's nice to have just a, uh, a really sharp, like an awl would, would work uh, for woodworking. It's just a point, um, a pointy tool, okay? I've got some scissors. I've got an embroidery needle with, uh, with an eye on it, and I've got some thread, and you can use all different kinds of thread. Again, that's something else that you can be creative with. Try to find a thread that is not going to easily break. And so what I like to do is I'll kind of take a piece of the thread and wrap it around my fingers and just pull. And if it doesn't easily snap, then that's gonna be a good enough thread to use. A lot of just regular embroidery thread or sewing thread is, um, is, is easy to break. And over time, as you're opening and closing your book, or even as you're making the book and pulling on the string, that can easily break. So I can pull on this thread and it's not gonna break. Uh, this is a quilting thread, so um, I recommend that. And then, uh, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, the piece of paper here is just so you can see the needle and thread a little bit better. I've got a pencil, I've got a ruler, and I've got a, um, a knife that I can use if I need it. Okay, I'm gonna set a couple of these things off to the side. So the first thing that I wanna do is I want to fold my paper. Now, what you're gonna do is measure half the length of the paper and make a small mark. This paper is 14 inches by four inches. So I'm gonna measure seven inches and just make a very light mark. You don't wanna make a very dark mark. If you, if you wanna be able to go erase it later, make sure that your marks are very soft. But I'm just making a point there and then I'm gonna draw my line 
Again, very, very gently. I'm barely pressing with the pencil, barely pressing. It's all you need to make a mark. And then I'm gonna score the paper. So that's what the knife is for. Um, you could also use the edge of some scissors. Uh, you could even use the bone folder to do the scoring. And the scoring is gonna make, especially thicker watercolor paper like this, it's gonna make it a lot easier to fold. If you have very thin paper, you might not need to do the scoring part. Um, like this, this, uh, this, this pink construction paper, I don't think I'll need that. And I'll show you how, you how to use the bone folder and make a nice even fold there. All right, so I'm just gonna use my ruler again. Don't try to freehand a straight line, you can't do it. It's very, very difficult. And again, I am barely pressing with this knife, barely pressing at all, because I don't wanna cut through the paper. I just wanna make a little bit of, um, just kind of a very soft cut. And that way, when I fold the paper, I have a nice, even fold there, okay? So these other ones I have already started so that you don't have to watch me measure all of those. So that one is easy to fold. And this one as well. So I've got those. And then this one, I don't think uh, that I need to score anything. I went ahead and measured just to show you the middle mark. But with this paper, it's thin enough. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna fold it over like that. And then I'm gonna use the bone folder, make a mark in the middle like this, and then go bottom to top or top to bottom, whatever. And I'm gonna make a nice sharp crease. Okay, so now I'm ready to start putting my book together. I've got my paper folded, I've got my uh, needle and thread, and I am gonna start putting it together. Okay, so first, I'm gonna nestle my paper together like this. And probably the hardest part I think of making a book is keeping all your paper straight and, and kind of together in, 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 the, like in, a, in a tight pack or else it gets really loose. And I'm just gonna set that in there. Now I have a cutting board, a cutting mat here, which is really a nice thing to have if you're just cutting on a hard wooden or metal table um, then it can be hard to it you don't have something for the needle or the, the the cutting tool to go all the way through all right so I'm gonna make sure everything's lined up nice and tight there now I want to make an odd number of holes I like to just do five holes if I had a much taller book I might make more like seven or nine but I'm just gonna do five so I'm just gonna make a little mark in the middle. And then I like to do a mark about a half inch from the top and a half inch from the bottom. And then more marks in between those two and another one in between those two. Now, if you wanna measure this space and, and make that more you know, perfectly even space in between each hole, then you are welcome to do that. That's just kinda of how I do it. It's a quick and easy way to do it. And now I need to make holes. I'm gonna pre uh, kind of pre-drill my holes here so that it's easy to get the thread through. So I'm not having to poke a hole each time I want to thread. All right, so I'm just gonna push straight down and that went all the way through. Again, I'm being really careful not to let the paper shift around so that all the holes stay lined up. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is I need to thread my needle. Now this is a tricky part. I hope I can do this quickly for you. If not, I'll pause it and I'll restart again when I get my needle. Now the amount of thread that you want is going to be three, or I usually do four because you might have a little, it's, it doesn't hurt to have extra, four times the length of, or the, yeah, the length of your spine. So I'm going to go one, grab it, two, pull out some more, three, and I'm pulling out a little bit more each time, four. And again, a little bit extra doesn't hurt, so I'm just gonna cut it here. And now let's see if I can thread this needle quickly. I maybe should have done this before I started the video, but let's see. Got it. Okay, so normally if, you, if you're used to sewing things, if you're a seamstress or a tailor and you know how to sew clothing, 
you might be used to pulling the thread all the way through and then knotting it at the bottom. You don't want to do that with this. You're just going to pull, I pull about the length of the width of the spine right there. So I have just a little bit extra like that. And then I'm going to start going through the middle of the book. I'm going to start in the middle hole here. And again, let's see, hopefully my holes are lined up. There we go. Try not to stab myself. All right, and I'm gonna just pull that through. I wanna leave a good maybe five or five inches or so there because I'm, that's what I'm gonna use to tie off at the end, okay? Then I'm going to go through this next hole. Coming up through that, you could go either way. If I wanted to go this way, you could, either way. I'm gonna pin that there so that when I pull this thread through, it doesn't just pull through. All right, Th this is uh, a little tricky to work with your hand skills. You have to be holding the book tight and at the same time, you know, not again, not letting the pages shift around. All right, do that there. Okay, then I'm going to go back, skip the middle hole, and come through here. Again, pulling it tight. Each time I go through a hole, I'm pulling it tight, and then down through the top. Okay, and then again, I'm going to skip that middle hole, or the, I'm going to skip to the middle again. And come back up, and there we go. All right, now that's all the sewing. Okay. And now I'm just gonna tie this off here. My fat fingers don't help with this. All right, and just tie it up. You can tie it in a bow if you like. My, I'm not that dexterous. Let's see if I can do that. That's just kind of a nice way to finish it. Nope. All right, I'm gonna do three. Okay, you don't want that not to, to fall through. Okay, and then I'm just gonna trim that off. And now I've got a book. I can fold this back on itself. And I've got a nice book. Okay, there we go. Again, very, very simple. And you can use this to make sketchbooks, uh, whatever kind of book you like. Put your photographs in there. And there we go. That's it. Very, very simple book. If you get really into this, like I said, look online. There's all kinds of uh, YouTube videos and other ways of doing different kinds of binding. And, and you could really have a lot of fun with this and be very creative with book forms. So, all right, that's it. Have fun, guys. Thank you.